In this video, you will find out what is appendix, what are the causes of the appendicitis, what are the signs and the symptoms of the appendicitis, where is the appendix pain located, how to know if you have the appendicitis, how to diagnose the appendicitis, and what is the treatment of the appendicitis. Is appendix to me the only treatment? Before I begin the video, I want to tell you that if you want to directly jump to any part of the video like the sign and symptoms of the appendicitis or the diagnosis or the treatment part, just go to the description below, I provided you the time link. Now let's begin with the anatomy of the appendix. The appendix is a word derived from the Latin word vermiform appendix. Vermiform means warm like and appendix means something attached or continuation. Hence it is a muscular tubular structure arising from the cecum. Its length is variable, ranging from 5 to 35 cm with average of 9 cm and its diameter is 1 to 3 mm that is the size of the majestic. The location of the appendix is the posterior medial aspect of the tip of the cecum that is the area of the convergence of the tinea. The position of the tip of the appendix is variable and the most common position is retrocecal position accounting 74%. It's followed by the pelvic position. Retrocecal position is the most common position. Because during the childhood, continued growth of the cecum commonly rotates the appendix into a retrocecal but intraperitoneal position. The least common position is the post ileal position accounting 0.5%. This occurred due to the failure of the rotation. The support of the appendix is by the mesa appendix, that is the fold of mesentery and contains the appendicular artery, which is a branch of the lower division of the ileocolic artery and is a branch of the supermesentric artery. Since the appendicular artery is an end artery, thrombosis leads to the development of the gangrenous appendicitis. The lymphatic drainage of the appendix occurs to the ileocolic lymph nodes along the superior mesentric artery. Now the question is, is appendix good for us? Many researchers have shown that it may serve as a reservoir of the good intestinal bacteria and may aid in the recolonization and maintenance of the normal colonic mucus. Appendicitis, it means the inflammation of the appendix. And the history of the first appendectomy dates back to 1735. He was a French surgeon named Claudius Amiens. And is also associated with the term Amiens hernia, which means the appendix in hernia. Now the question is, why is there appendicitis? What is the cause of the appendicitis? The cause is because of the luminal obstruction of the appendix. It occurs secondary to the fecal stasis or fecolates or lymphoid hyperplasia or fruits and vegetable materials parasites such as the ascarids, and not to forget the tumors. The tumors comprises of around 1% of the cause of the appendicitis. Hence, it's important that we send the specimen for examination. The luminal obstruction leads to the progressive distension of the appendix and leads to the bacterial stasis. The most common organism is the anaerobic bacteroid fragilis that is account 80% of the cause of the appendicitis. And it is the same organism which is most common in gut. It is followed by the Escherichia coli accounting 77% of the cause of the bacteria. Now the question is one more prone to the development of the appendicitis. Anyone can have the appendicitis but it peaks during the childhood and early adult that is during the early 20s. And it's also the most common cause of the emergency surgery in the childhood. Now what are the symptoms of the appendicitis or how do they clinically present? This can be known by the Murphy's triad that is the pain, vomiting and the temperature. The appendix pain is poorly localized. It's colicky in nature and typically starts in the periumbilical region and it shifts to the right lower abdomen after 6 hours. This typical presentation occurs only in around 50% of the patients where in other patients there is pain in the right a lower abdomen or there is a vague abdominal pain. This abdominal pain worsens while coughing or sneezing or walking or making other jarring movements or while taking deep breaths known as the dumpy sign. There is also vomiting which follows the onset of the pain. It is non-bilious, hence it is non-bitter in taste or non-sour in taste. And the fever associated with the appendicitis is usually low grade and usually occurs after 6 hours of onset of the pain. And it is absent in 20% of the patient. If the fever is high grade meaning more than 38.5 degrees centigrade, it suggests the other causes such as the mesenteric lymphadenitis. In a patient with appendicitis, there is also loss of the appetite. There is also constipation, diarrhea, increased frequency of micturation, abdominal floating and flatulence. Now coming to the what are the different signs of the appendicitis. 
first and foremost is the pointing sign that is the patient points to a point from where the pain began and it moved there is also tenderness in the McBurney point which is known as the McBurney sign McBurney point is nothing but it is one third of the distance from the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus and this is known as the McBurney sign and uh, there is also rebound tenderness in the McBurney point known as the Bloomberg sign the swast sign and obturator test are also positive swast sign means patient will lie with high right hip flexed for pain relief as inflamed appendix lies over the swast and obturator test is when hip is flexed and internally rotated spasm of the obturator internus occurs causing pain in the hypogastrium and there is also Rolfsen sign positive that is palpation on the left lower abdomen causes pain in the right lower abdomen now there are various different scoring systems for the appendicitis that can be remembered by the term RAT. R means the Ripasai scoring, A means Alvarado, and T means Zanaki scoring. Alvarado scoring is the most commonly used scoring and can be known by the shortcut of mnemonics mantrails. And there are other uh, scoring systems also which are very important in diagnosis of the appendicitis. Now, how to diagnose a patient with appendicitis? Now, one is dependent upon the symptoms or how do they clinically present as already mentioned. And another is the blood investigation in which the white blood cell count is raised. It's also known as the leukocytosis. Other investigation is by the ultrasonography of the abdomen and pelvis. And it states that a tubular, non-peristaltic, non-compressible structure measuring more than 6 mm in diameter with wall thickness of more than 2 mm arising from the cecum with thick cone mesentery with free fluid in the right lower abdomen with appendicular may be present. There is also proof tenderness in the patient. Other investigations that can be done in these patients are the renal function test, liver function test, which are important for the diagnosis plus for the management. How to manage a patient with appendicitis? We usually perform the surgery, that is the appendectomy, either open appendectomy or laparoscopic appendectomy, depending upon the availability of the surgery. There are various incisions that are done. They are the gridiron incision, which is most common. Other is the Rutherford incision. Land incision is done in the pediatric patient and the other is a Fowler wear incision. Now the question is, is surgery always mandatory? The points favoring is that the complications that are associated with appendicitis like the appendicular lump, abscess or perforation peritonitis or recurrent appendicitis has been the points that are suggesting for the surgery. But there has been one study known as the NOTI study that has mentioned that the conservative management of the appendicitis is also very helpful. It has mentioned that antibiotics for suspected acute appendicitis are safe and effective and may avoid unnecessary appendectomy reducing operation rate, surgical risks and overall cost. After two years of follow-up, recurrence rates are less than 14% and may be safely and effectively treated with further antibiotics. Hence, the appendicitis can also be managed with the conservative management. And if you have any comments or queries, please write to me below. I will be more than happy to answer. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos. Thank you.